out of form 3 chapter 10 video number 7 continue our title the development in the space explorations so now america okay and now how is the story what is the next story in the year 1990 and this is the most important year in the development of the space explorations in the year 1990 为什么呢? Okay, so I give a lot of stuff, it has a lot of America launched its first shuttle spaceships. The first Taikong Swat, the first Taikong Swat, the name is called Discovery, Fasting Hall. Or what's mean by shuttle spaceship? You can go to the after space and after set the mission, finish all the tasks, they will return to the Earth, just like the normal aeroplane. Just like a normal plane, you can go to the Taikong, you can go to the Taikong, you can go to the Taikong, you can go to the Taikong. 明白吗? 再来再起 Discovery So the spaceship carried the five astronauts and placed the one and that year 他载了五个太空人 and placed a Hubble Space Telescope 他放了一个太空望远镜 and the name is called Hubble Space Telescope Hubble 太空望远镜 in the orbit 放在轨道里面 and this powerful telescope is still sending back the photograph of the distant galaxy so with this telescope finally we can see the galaxy we can see whatever in the outer space until today so that year is the most significant year 那一年就是太空发展最重要的一年 without the year 如果没有那一年 there's no chapter 9 啦, there's sun 啦, 那些太阳全部看不到, there's no chapter 10 啦, understand so this is the year 1990 啦, 1990年 NASA discovery on the year 1990 okay and discovery actually retired 它已经退休了的 okay Almost few years ago, la, retire, almost 10 years ago, I don't know, retire. And when he retire, or he or she, I don't know. When the discovery, the, when it retire, actually, he almost go to the after space more than 100 times, 超过100次了. So, this is NASA discovery. There are All look like the same, you know. Some of them is called Columbia, some of them is called Adendra. There are but they look like the same white color, and they're going to write NASA, see some of the Okay, so this is NASA discovery. Or in the year 1990, another important case, another important history will be the Hubble Space Telescopes. Or until today, this telescope actually is the highest technology, the most expensive scientific equipment until today. La. 在地球上最贵科技最高的一个科技产品,科学产品就是它的 Space Telescope, Hubble Space Telescope. Okay? And the price last time, Okay, in 1990, 30 years ago, the price is 50 million billion US dollars. 15 billion US dollars. What is 15 billion? 150. You imagine, 150 million. Okay, if convert to Malaysia, times 4 point something, times 4 point something, but 30 years ago, 30 years ago, 600. Can you imagine? How much is 600? So, how expensive? Okay, or remember the most important is here. Until today, nobody can depress it. No other scientific equipment can depress this Hubble Space Telescope with the technology. So this is a telescope. Or maybe we have a look. We can see. Is there something the most important thing? Like it or not, we should see. Is it okay? Life is just one lesson. Space exploration, space exploration. Okay. This film, this film takes you on a journey, journey. a journey, journey ever, ever deeper. deeper. I want to tell you the story of an instrument that has vastly improved our view of the skies, sharpening our perception of the universe and penetrating ever deeper toward the furthest edges of time and space. Looking at the night sky, we see the familiar twinkle of starlight, light that has travelled enormous distances to reach us. But we're not seeing the stars themselves flicker. The universe is gloriously transparent, 
The light from distant stars and galaxies can travel unchanged across space for thousands, millions, even billions of years. But then, in the last few microseconds before that light reaches our eyes, the accurate view of those stars and galaxies is snatched away. This is because, as light passes through our atmosphere, the ever-changing blankets of air, water vapor and dust blur the fine cosmic details. So for many years, astronomers around the world longed for an observatory in space. As early as 1923, the famed German rocket scientist Hermann Oberth suggested a space-based telescope. However, it would be decades before technology caught up with the dream. The American astronomer Lyman Spitzer came up with a more realistic plan for a space telescope in 1946. From a position in space above Earth's atmosphere, a telescope would be able to detect the pristine light from stars, galaxies and other objects well before it was distorted by the air we breathe. The result? Much sharper images than even the largest telescopes on the ground can achieve. Images limited in sharpness only by the quality of the optics. In the 1970s, NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and ESA, the European Space Agency, began working together to design and build what would become the Hubble Space Telescope. The name is a tribute to Edwin Powell Hubble, the founder of modern cosmology, who in the 1920s proved that not all that we see in the sky lies within the Milky Way. Instead, the cosmos extends far, far beyond. Hubble's work changed our perception of mankind's place in the universe forever, and the choice of naming the most magnificent telescope of all time after Edwin Hubble could not have been more appropriate. It took two decades of dedicated collaboration between scientists, engineers and contractors from many countries before Hubble was finally finished. On April the 24th, 1990, five astronauts aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery left on a journey that changed our vision of the universe forever. They deployed the eagerly anticipated space telescope in an orbit roughly 600 kilometers above the Earth's surface. On Earth, the astronomers waited impatiently for the first results. But less than two months later, it was clear that Hubble's vision was anything but sharp. The mirror had a serious flaw. Engineers have discovered that the giant telescope has a warped mirror. One of the mirrors in the Hubble Space Telescope is out of shape. And as a result, the pictures it's sending back are no better than those from telescopes on the ground. Oh. So, 600亿送回来的照片蒙蒙一片,好像六块钱的东西, okay? So what to do? 不简单, okay? Repair theory. A defect in the shape of the mirror prevented Hubble from taking sharp images. The mirror's edge was too flat, by only a mere fiftieth of the width of a human hair. But to accomplish its mission, Hubble had to be perfect in every tiny detail. The disappointment was almost too great to bear. Not only amongst astronomers, but also for American and European taxpayers. Nevertheless, over the following two years, scientists and engineers from NASA and ESA worked together to design and build a corrective optics package named COSTAR for Corrective Optics Space Telescope Axial Replacement. Hubble's masters now faced another tough decision. Which science instrument should they remove so that CoStar could be fitted to Hubble? They eventually chose the high-speed photometer. Hubble's first servicing mission in 1993 has gone down in history as one of the highlights of human spaceflight. It captured the attention of both astronomers and the public at large to a degree that no space shuttle mission since has achieved. Meticulously planned and brilliantly executed, the mission succeeded on all counts. 
co-star corrected Hubble's eyesight more perfectly than anyone had dared to hope. Okay, so until today, all the photo, most of the photo hey, for the galaxy or whatever that we, lead, uh, that we get from the Google or whatever from NASA, all of them actually come from space telescopes, Hubble space telescope, So do you think it's very important? Okay, next. In the year 1992, Spaceship Mars Observer was launched to orbit the Mars to look for the site for the astronaut to land in the future. But until now, there's no astronaut landed on the Mars Hwasin. Okay, and in the year 2000, okay, not very important, others not very important. So uh, actually, after the after this, actually a lot of study will go to the Mars, you know why? When we send the spaceship go to the Mars, we found water, we found water. Because of the water on the Mars, it may be having the living thing on the Mars. So that's why more the story, now we're having more and more study about the Mars because just because of the water, is there anything living thing inside? We send a lot of space probe, robot or whatever, go to the Mars to make the explorations. But you maybe should know about this one. Okay? Don't know, don't know that my. But how to get Mars? Jiangqi Hua Xing de na. Kan kan yi xia ye bu chao. Ren sen jiu na ma yi tang ke. Ruo ni lian zhe yi tang ke, ke neng er shi fen zhong de yi tang ke, ye mei you le. 那么你的人生就少了太空这一个东西了，很可怜的，明白吗？再看下去，How to get Mars? 7 months to get Mars 7个月过后才到 Not one day 不是一小时 OK We don't fire a rocket motor all the way to Mars. We don't need to. We just place the spacecraft on a trajectory to Mars and let it coast for seven months and 300 million miles until it reaches the planet. We are now at an altitude of 73 miles, moving at a speed of 12,192 miles per hour. Expected parachute deploy in five seconds. Four, three, two, one, mark. We are awaiting confirmation the parachute has deployed. Parachute 
ejected. Heat shield deployed event. Uh, spacecraft reporting that heat shield has indeed jettisoned. Heat, heat. Lander separation event has been detected. Spacecraft reporting lander is separated, moving at a speed of 173 miles per hour. We are near our terminal velocity. Expected retro rocket ignition on my mark. Mark. point in time we should be on the ground. Any signal that we receive from now indicates the vehicle would be alive, on the ground and bouncing. The spacecraft has to survive all the bounces or landing be a success. at the moment. Stand by. Signal strength is currently intermittent. We don't see a signal at the moment. Right. What do we see? We've got the signal! The first thing we have to do after we land is open our solar panels to the sun so we'll have some power. This charges up the batteries. After that, we can deploy the camera mast so the rover can see, and deploy the antenna so the rover can talk to us. Okay, so this is about Mars, 火星将子气的, okay? But is there any living on the Mars? 在火星上真的有生物吗? We don't know, okay? But actually have a look, 再看到一次, 要完了, Is this proof of life on Mars? Well, it's certainly got people talking. This image has been beamed back to Earth by one of NASA's two robot rovers that are currently trundling about the surface of the red planet. The figure, which many reckon looks like the mythical Bigfoot, was pictured at the far left of one of the panoramic photographs taken by the Spirit rover in late 2007. Of course, it's not the first time we've gone mad for something snapped on Mars. In 1976, the Viking Orbiter 1 took this photo, apparently showing a huge face on the surface of the red planet. It actually turned out to be an optical illusion caused by the sun and shadows. The robot